لانه غزه ما فيش فيها حياه غزه ما فيش فيها مستقبل That was Abu Kamal Ayazizi displaced from Gaza City telling UN workers that he's tired of life because he said there's no life in Gaza He said Gaza has no future The schools there are closed Health facilities and hospitals are closed. He's one of the more than one million Palestinians who are now refugees after being driven from their homes by the Israeli military. Those refugees who had made their way to Rafah are again being driven out by the Israeli military to the central areas of the Gaza Strip. According to Martin Griffiths, the UN's Undersecretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Emergency Relief Coordinator, well over one million people, including 600,000 children, are still sheltering in Rafah. They face starvation and the fire of Israel's military. On Wednesday, Stefan Dujaric, spokesperson for the UN Secretary General, discussed the situation in and around Gaza, including the efforts to get a vote on a resolution by the UN General Assembly recognizing Palestine as a state and full member of the UN. These are excerpts from the press conference at UN headquarters in New York Wednesday. Eddie, what can I share with you? Yeah, uh, is there any assessment by the OLA as to the legality of the UN proposed, uh, of the General Assembly proposed resolution? Because in the past, you know, Timor Leste, uh, South Sudan, the procedure was according to the UN Charter that first the Security Council recommends and then the General Assembly. <laughs> is there any assessment by OLA as to what is the legal legal status there the path to membership is clearly laid out in the charter for full membership right uh, there are several drafts uh, of a general assembly resolution uh, floating around as you know this is well if not more than I do um, it is up to member states to decide on what text uh, they will adopt. As always, we will then look at the text that is adopted and see uh, what roles are assigned to by the secretary to the secretary general. Maggie, thanks, Steph. Um, on the UNRWA headquarters in Jerusalem. I seem to recall a while back that um, Israel was trying to evict UNRWA from the headquarters. So was there anyone, any staff actually in the present in the building? Uh, I mean, it was, it was nighttime. I think there were some security, there was security staff and support uh, staff, but it is a functioning office. So they're still in it. Yeah. They haven't been evicted. That's correct. Okay. And then, <clears throat> sorry. Um, the Biden, Biden administration paused a shipment of mm -hmm. bombs last week. It's come to light this week. Um, 1,800 2,000 pound bombs and 1,700 500 pound bombs uh, to Israel that they're pausing. Uh, any reaction? I mean, as we've said, I think the, any, you know, the, the, the global arms trade is, is sadly growing. And I think all those countries that export weapons have a responsibility uh, to see how, uh, how and when they are used. Uh, ben, sorry, uh, Benno, then Ibtissam, then Linda, and Deji. Oops. Thank you, Steph. Um, so, just to get that straight, you said uh, no goods have entered Karim Shalom as of now, though Israel said they reopened the, the crossing, right? Correct. So what is happening at the yeah. crossing right now. Um, it, it seems that you contradict what, what the Israelis say. But maybe I there's a I reason for Listen, that. I will let you do the analysis. I think people, and I can't speak for the Israeli side, they're speaking about what they're doing. What I'm speaking about is what is going on on the Gaza, on the Gaza side and our inability uh, to get uh, things in. I've checked again that with various people, and I was in meetings this morning, that no goods have come in for us to be able to use. Okay, Ibtissam. Uh, thank you, Steph. <clears throat> First of all, up on uh, the honor war uh, attack, um, I was struck actually by the fact that uh, whether Mr. Lazzarini or you will describe it as a demo, where in fact, if you look at the video that he posted, it's an attack on your facilities. 
Um, and uh, the fact that the people didn't get in, it was probably, I, I don't know. But uh, I guess my question here uh, is, uh, do you actually condemn it? Uh, and of then course. also... Yeah. Um, and as uh, I said, uh, we've protesting, uh, we've, we've protested directly to the host, of the, the, to the Israelis who have a responsibility as a host uh, to ensure the protection of, of, UN, uh, of UN premises. Are you um, afraid, uh, or does the Secretary General feel, does he feel that um, the security of the UNRWA, UN personnel, specifically UNRWA and the High Commissioner, is actually in danger there in Jerusalem, given the amount of attacks and the latest attack on your facility? Well, we, we have seen uh, at, at different points small groups of, of people uh, demonstrating very uh, actively, loudly, and we saw uh, uh, we saw what happened uh, yesterday. We take the necessary security uh, precautions. Uh, the Israelis, as host, as the host of any UN uh, premises, have a responsibility to ensure our, our safety. Uh, and all of this is extremely concerning, indeed. Uh, uh, sorry, last question. Mm -hmm. Can you? Couldn't, I mean, I was reading local reports um, from Gaza. Um, could you confirm that uh, the Israeli authorities asked uh, your international staff to, or part of your international staff, to leave Rafah? No, I'm not aware that they were asked to. I mean, our international staff <laughs> has remained uh, uh, remained in. Uh, in, in Rafa, uh, obviously, they're moving. Uh, whether you know individuals may be moving uh, to ensure their own safety, and I, I don't have that kind of granularity. Uh, but they have not left. Uh, they have not left Rafa. Uh, Linda, Deji, Benny, Maggie. <laughs> um, thank you, Steph. Earlier, you said that there was active military operations going on. Mm -hmm. Um, that were impacting aid. I believe that's what you said. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering if you had more information about what kind of active military. Well, I mean, we've seen Hamas we've seen uh, we've seen the the tanks. We've seen uh, Israeli operations. We've seen uh, fighting. I mean, I you know I, I have to tell you. Um, there are continuing military activities, right, between Hamas and Palestinian militants and the Israelis. We we are not um, we are not running a a sort of a military observation mission, um, and I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of my colleagues on the ground, right? If they hear gunshots, if they hear rocket fires, if they hear mortar fire, if they hear tank rounds, they're priorities for their own safety and for the safety of people uh, they are trying to help. Uh, we are not in the business, you know, we are not there to observe and report back on who's doing uh, the fighting. Uh, Deji. Yeah, I follow up with uh, Benno's question. Let me get some details. Uh, ha have there been any uh, UN aid trucks arrived at Karim Shalom border crossing, waiting for nothing has come. Not, no UN trucks have come in. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, know. I mean, you, you has has they have have they been? I mean, there? we, there's there are UN supplies that have been wait, there are on the other side that we have not been able because to process. Because I I, I feel it's consistent actually. To, uh, I mean, the Israeli part they said they they reopening the the entry again, but trucks are already arriving at the crossing and they need a thorough security inspection. It, it, is that the reason why you, you should? I mean, you, you, there, there are other parties engaged in this whole issue. You should speak to them to get the details of exactly what they're doing. I can so, only speak to what we're doing. So, so for humanitarian operation here in, in Gaza for you, and it, what is the biggest challenge now? Is that because the biggest challenge is that there's conflict still going on? The biggest challenge is that you know th th there's fighting still going on. That's the biggest challenge. We, I, you know, it's it's we're trying to run a humanitarian operation in the middle of a conflict zone, right? Where uh, the, the civilians are not protected, where civilian infrastructure is not respected, where hospitals have become military zones. Those are the challenges. For KPFK, I'm Don DeBar.